the first step to servicing your hydraulic breaker would be to remove the bolt cap. The second step is to remove your damper from the top of your breaker. Take your grease cover off of the front of the hydraulic breaker and remove the hose. Now remove the front dust cover where the hoses go through. Once you have removed the front covers of your hydraulic breaker, it's time to remove the main body from the case. Screw in the eyelet provided in your toolbox into the top of the head and start pulling this main body out of the case. The head damper will come out as you pull the main body up and out of the case. Once the main body is removed from the case, the first and most important step to taking a hydraulic breaker apart is to remove the nitrogen from the head cap. This head cap is under high pressure and the nitrogen must be released before the bolts are loosened. This nitrogen can be released by your gauge or also a small screwdriver pushing in on the plunger. Once you have removed the nitrogen from the head, then move down to your accumulator if your current model has one and remove the nitrogen out of it as well. Go ahead and remove the remainder of the grease line so it will not be in your way. In order to release the nitrogen from the accumulator, take out the plug on the front first. Take the cap screw off of the charge valve and then use your Allen wrench to unscrew the charge valve about halfway to release the nitrogen. Once the nitrogen is released from your hydraulic breaker, then it is time to remove the nuts from the through bolts. Always use an X pattern in removing and installing the through bolts in your breaker. Once you have removed the top nuts from your through bolts, you can unscrew the through bolts out of the bottom threads or nuts, depending on your model, and pull all four completely out of the unit. Now we are ready to disassemble the three main components of your hydraulic breaker. First, we will remove the head cap. If you will notice, there is some hydraulic oil dripping from the head cap. This is very important that some hydraulic fluid very little, around three or four ounces, is left in the head cap in order to lubricate the gas seal. Once you have removed the head cap, then take your eye bolt that was provided in your toolbox and screw in the top of the piston. Pull the piston out from the top and set it on your table. Once you have removed the piston, 
Use your eye bolt to screw into the back of the control valve. The control valve comes out in three pieces, but is actually one unit. Once you have removed the control valve, use the eye bolts provided in your toolbox to remove the cylinder from the front head. Lay the front head down horizontally on your bench or table because this is where we need to replace seals and inspect the cylinder for damage. The front head also needs to be inspected, so we'll take a look at that as well. Lay the front head down on your bench or table so you will be able to inspect the front cover bushing. This bushing has wear tolerances depending on the size and model, and if the bushing is worn too much, it can cause a piston problem later on down the road. Also check the round bushing up inside the front head. As you can see, it is at the top, but you will also need to check it for wear and make sure there are no damage to it as well. Also inspect the chisel pins and the stopper pins that retain the tool in the front head. Once you have inspected the front head and made the repairs necessary if needed, then it's time to start on the cylinder. Remove all of the bolts from the accumulator. Once the accumulator bolts have been removed, take out the needle valve at the top of the accumulator to inspect for damage or and replace the O-ring. Once you have all the bolts out of your accumulator, take the accumulator apart so you can inspect the parts for damage. First, we will inspect the diaphragm to check for any holes or leaks. Then we will check the rings in the bottom of the accumulator to make sure none of them are broken and make sure the nut is still tight. Also, take a look at the seal. That is a seal that you will have to replace once the accumulator is put back on. While you have the accumulator off and have it inspected, go ahead and remove the accumulator seal and replace with a new one provided in your seal kit. This is a complete seal kit that should have every o-ring and seal that you need to completely rebuild your hydraulic breaker. When you go to replace the new seal on the bottom of the accumulator, it helps to add some grease in order for it to stick once you turn it back over so the seal does not get pinched. Now we are ready to disassemble the rest of the cylinder. All the RO plugs must be taken out of the cylinder and all of the O-rings must be replaced. All of these O-rings are provided in the seal kit.
Once you have removed all of the RO plugs out of the cylinder, now it is time to remove your BPM adjuster. You can start by loosening the top nut. Then remove the larger nut. This larger nut contains a needle and seat and an O-ring and those must be inspected for damage, especially at the bottom of the needle and also the O-ring will need to be replaced. Once you have removed your BPM adjuster, now we must remove our hose adapters. The hose adapters have O-rings on them as well, so inspect those O-rings because they, may, they will need to be replaced as well. Now it's time to inspect the seals in the bottom of your cylinder. As you can see, you have a seal at the very bottom with the lip pointed down, and the seal at the top has the lip pointed up. This is very important to look at before you take out the old seals. Remove, remove the old seals with a pick and discard them. As you will notice, there's a third seal in the bottom of your cylinder. The, it is the very upper seal that is basically a wiper. It is a two-piece seal, but it can only go back in one way. Once you have removed your seals, inspect your cylinder for damage. If there is any scarring or scratches inside the cylinder walls, they can easily be polished with the correct tools. Once you have polished the inside of your cylinder to your satisfaction, take an air hose and blow in every RO plug every spot you can possibly find on the breaker to clean out. A lot of dirt and debris get trapped in the smaller passages where the cylinder must be machined, so it is very important that you blow out all the holes in the entire cylinder. Once you have cleaned your cylinder properly, and you have blown out all the holes and the debris is gone, then we need to change the O-rings on all of our RO plugs, hose adapters, and BPM adjuster. Once you have replaced all the O-rings on all the parts you have taken out of your cylinder, replace all of them back. An important note, when you are replacing your RO plugs and you're using an air wrench, be extremely careful when you get it down to the bottom before it bottoms out. You could possibly spin the O-ring off and it could cause a leak later on down the road. Once you have inspected your BPM adjuster, Replace the O-ring. It 
it is important to note that once you have replaced the o-ring on your bpm adjuster back the needle out of the bpm adjuster counterclockwise so the bottom does not bottom out once you put the main nut in Now it is time to adjust the BPM adjuster. Once you have put it back into the cylinder, take your Allen wrench and slowly turn the needle all the way down until it bottoms out. Once it bottoms out, back it up a one full turn and that should be maximum impact power to start out with. Tighten the jam nut on top of the BPM adjuster and that part is complete. Remove the O-rings from your hose adapters and replace with new ones. Once you have replaced all of the RO plugs, BPM adjuster, and hose adapters, and the cylinder is extremely clean, it is now time to replace your seals. As you can see, there is a special method in order to put the seals in that makes it easier to do. First, replace your bottom seal with the lip down. pointing toward the bottom. Then replace your middle seal with the same technique. With the lip of the seal pointing toward the top. Make sure your seals are seated in good. And now it is time for the last and the very upper seal. This is a two-piece seal and it is a wiper, but it can only go in one way. Make sure all of your seals are seated in and you are done with the bottom. With your new accumulator seal attached to the bottom, it is time to replace it on the cylinder. Be careful as to not to pinch the bottom seal and get your accumulator lined up. You have inspected the diaphragm and it is very clean, so go ahead and replace it back into your accumulator. Once you have your accumulator lined up, go ahead and replace all of the bolts in your accumulator. Once you have replaced the bolts in the accumulator, now it is time for the torque. All the accumulator bolts must be torqued to a specific specification 
and look in your owner's manual in order to get the correct torque specs. An important note, torque specs will change by model. Another important note, the torque specs are different on the accumulator body versus the accumulator cover. Once you have the accumulator torqued, it is now time to look at your piston. Take a rubber hammer and take knock the cylinder bush off of the piston. This cylinder bush is also full of seals and they all must be replaced. Use your pick or small screwdriver in order to get the seals out. If you will notice, at the top is a gas seal and there are two hard seals in the other two locations. The gas seal is always at the top in your cylinder bush where the O-ring is on the outside. The two hard seals that are about to be removed are also a two-piece seal. It has a hard seal on the outside, but there is also an O-ring underneath. Please make sure that you get the O-ring out as well as the hard seal. Once you have removed the seals from your cylinder bush, Inspect the inside for scarring or damage. This cylinder bush can also be polished. Remove the O-ring from the outside of the cylinder bushing and clean thoroughly. Once you have cleaned the cylinder bush, it is time to replace the seals. Put your O-rings back in first before you put the hard seals in place. There is also a specialized technique to use while putting the hard seals back in. If you will notice, the lip is always toward the top on the hard seal. Once you have replaced the hard seals, now it is time to put in the last seal at the top, which is the gas seal. Replace your rubber O-ring around the outside of the cylinder bush. And now it is ready to be reassembled. Before you reinstall the cylinder bush, check the piston for scarring. If you have scarring on the piston, the piston can be polished as well. Put the piston in a lathe and turn it on a medium speed and use a very fine, fine sandpaper to get rid of the debris. Once you have sanded the debris out of the grooves and etc., you are ready for your cross hatching process. Once you start the cross hatching process, the procedure is very simple. Hold the die grinder at a 45 degree angle in order to get an X type pattern on your piston. Never Move the die grinder up and down. 
directly on the piston as it could create grooves and let hydraulic fluid get by the seals. Once you have completed polishing the piston, it is time to reassemble the cylinder bush. Please make a note to use hydraulic oil before you beat the cylinder bush back down onto the piston using only a rubber hammer or wood. Also make sure that your gas seal and o-ring is at the top when you reassemble the cylinder bush. Now it is time for the inspection of your control valve. This is a three piece part and has very tight tolerances. Once you pull the control valve apart, check it thoroughly for scarring. You can polish the control valve the same way as you polish the piston and the cylinder to get rid of the scarring. These are very tight tolerances inside the control valve. It is very important that they are clean and smooth. The control valve is in time with the piston, so therefore it must work properly. Use your hydraulic oil to put on the control valve to reassemble. Shake the control valve to make sure that it performs correctly. You should hear a thud or a thump as it moves back and forth. Once you have cleaned the control valve, it's time to replace your O-ring. As you will notice, there are two O-rings on the control valve. This will help keep the hydraulic fluid from going back into the head cap. Once you have cleaned your piston, your control valve, your cylinder, it is now time for reinstallation. Make note that there is a dowel pin between every section and that dowel pin must be in place in order to keep these sections straight and lined up. Lower the cylinder down onto the front head. Make sure the o-ring is not pinched or mashed for the grease line to come to the bushings. It is an important note that underneath the cylinder bush there is also an o-ring. The o-ring just lays in the top of the cylinder before the piston and upper bushing are put back in. Once you have replaced the o-ring at the top of the cylinder, it is time to put your piston and cylinder bush back in the unit. Use the eye bolt provided, screwing it in the top of the piston, and lower slowly not to damage any of the components. Always use hydraulic fluid when reinstalling your piston so that the piston will go smoothly down into the cylinder and this will also help protect it during initial startup. Take your rubber hammer and knock your piston and cylinder bush down into the hammer. Using hydraulic oil, 
Now reinstall your control valve into the cylinder. Head cap preparation. There is one o-ring on the head cap that seals the gas off from the outside for leaks. But it's also important to note that the head cap must be cleaned thoroughly inside. Once you have the o-ring replaced and the head cap clean, put three or four ounces of hydraulic oil into the unit and this will help lubricate the gas seal on top of the cylinder bush. Again, notice the dowel pin at the top of the hammer once you replace the head cap. Lower the head cap down onto the cylinder and just take a rubber hammer and knock it back down. Now it is time to reinstall the through bolts in the hammer. Always inspect the through bolts for damage. You could have thread wear or stress in the through bolt. But once you have determined your through bolts are good, go ahead and start putting them back in. It's very important to make a note that you want full thread to thread contact between the top nut and the through bolt. You also do not want to bottom the through bolt down on the front head. So it's very important to get the height correct on the through bolts. As you can see, you will screw the nuts down on them and you can adjust the through bolts to make them where you need them. Once you have the correct height needed for your through bolt, you can use an air wrench to tighten them up in the X pattern as noted earlier. Once you have tightened the through bolts, it is time to torque them. Please note that all models have different torque ranges for the through bolts and please look into your owner's manual for those specifications. Once the through bolts are retorqued, it is time to slide the main body back into the case. Use the eye bolt that was provided in your toolbox to lift the main body over the case and it slides down in very easily. One thing to note before the main body gets slid down into the case, you need to inspect the MC pads inside that case to make sure there are no damage. You also need to check the bottom damper in the very bottom of the case to make sure that it is not worn out and inspect the upper damper to make sure it is not worn out as well. Once you have slid the main body back down into the case, it is time to recharge the accumulator and front head. The accumulator should be charged between 55 and 60 bar. Once you have put nitrogen into the accumulator, Make sure you tighten the needle set screw back down and also tighten the cap nut back onto the needle. Replace the cap on the accumulator cover and that process is done. Now it is time to charge the head cap. The head cap should have 10 to 12 bar of nitrogen put in it. Once you have the proper amount of nitrogen, just unscrew the gauge and it should stay in the head cap. Replace the nut on the charge valve and that process is finished. Now it is time to replace the grease line. Reconnect the grease line 
in the cylinder and leave it hanging out of the breaker. And reconnect it to the front cover as well. The grease cover can be reinstalled onto your case. Slide your head damper back in to the top part of the breaker after inspecting the MC pad. This tightens this main body inside the case. Replace the upper damper on top of the main body. Reinstall the dust cover on front of the case. Now you are ready to put the head cap back onto your breaker and tighten down all the bolts. Once the bolts have been retightened, take your grease gun and put about 10 to 15 pumps of grease into the grease slime. This will be good for initial startup with metal to metal contact between the chisel and the new bushing. This completes your hydraulic breaker service video. Hopefully this video has been informational and informative to help you rebuild your construction attachments hydraulic breaker.